Um, all right, there he is, Mike Gill. Now, Mister Thursday here on on Birds three sixty five, and he did have enough time to pull a t shirt on. And aren't we all thankful for that? Um, I forgot what I forgot. I switched days this week. Sorry, guys. Yeah, well, no, I figured. Or you were all tampering somewhere with somebody about something. Yeah, uh, what what t shirt you got on today, big guy? Nothing great. Just an old school Billabong, like it's nineteen ninety five. All right, Billabong. Yeah, what, what is Billabong again? Uh, it was an old okay. surf uh, brand. You know, the the children of the shore. You'd see us wearing them all the time down here. You know, I don't know okay. if they're wearing them up in the uh, in the Philly area. Nah, nobody right? knows. I, I think it still exists. Doesn't Billabong? I still think exist? so. Yeah, it's not quite like you used to have like Billabong, Quicksilver, O'Neill. They were like the big surf brands back in like the. You know, I, I'm, I'm dead. Yeah, it still exists. So go, go. We're giving them a free. I, plug. I'm sorry if I disappointed the viewers that I ran out of colleges that I visited. That's a, no, 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 no. Billabong is fine. And if you were an actual surfer dude, I'm finding that difficult to believe. Yeah, back but... in the day, man. I mean, you know, everybody down here had a boogie. I wasn't a surfboard, I was a boogie board. Now, you, that's kind you, of a big difference. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, now, I think we tried. You, you were at Pepperdine, weren't you? I think we talked about that before. Me, no, I've is, never been, never been to Pepperdine. Never been to, and I don't oh, have a Pepperdine a, T-shirt. All right, well, that's where you should wear the Billabong because that's the best college campus in the country, right on the ocean. That yeah, is, uh, I, I don't think I have um, to tell you. Uh, you don't need to go to uh, the actual school to get the T-shirt. You can no. get everything on Amazon. You can order one today. Well, that's true. It'll, too. it'll yeah. be on your doorstep that's, first thing no, tomorrow since, morning. Since I'm 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 a magnet guy, so anytime I visit a city, I get a magnet at the airport of that particular city. Gotcha. So I no longer have room. I go on my I go favorite. beer koozie, Jody. Beer koozie. Beer koozie. I like those. Yeah. I yeah. I I have a whole drawer, one of our drawers in the kitchen. The whole thing. It's filled to the top with beer koozies of every campus and every that's like too, uh, that's too much space for that. It one. is. I went. Space. I went to a shot glass phase when I went uh, visiting. I'd get a shot glass from wherever uh, I was uh, traveling to, uh, and yeah, I got way too many shots. They same thing. Uh, the back of one of the cabinets in my kitchen, it's got uh, forty-seven shot glasses that never get used, and they're still sitting in there. All right, but we're going to use you, uh, Mike Gill. That's right. Um, the big signings, of course, Huff and uh, Barkley and uh, CJGJ coming back. Which of those three do you think has the biggest impact on the Eagles next year? Uh, it's funny you ask because everybody would just, you know, Barkley's the biggest name, obviously. I think Chauncey Gardner Johnson is the guy they might know next. Huff is the least known. But he plays the position that I think the team values the most, right? That edge rusher spot is the guy that I think, you know, when they signed him, I said, here's the hard part for him. Is he going to be as good as Reddick at his best? I mean, you're essentially asking the guy to replace what Hassan Reddick gave you. Now, he had one huge flash in the pan season. Is he a flash in the pan or is he a guy that's on the rise? So I think Bryce Huff is the guy that, they value that position the most. He's the least known of the three, probably, but probably the most important for the defense. I mean, obviously, in the league today, pressure, edge rusher, that's where the Eagles like to draft. They're essentially saying, we're signing you in lieu of having to try to draft a guy or, you know, maybe even give money to Hassan Reddick and bring him back. You might see Sweat and Reddick gone, and that puts a lot of pressure on this guy that he better be pretty darn good. So I would say that he's the guy. Now, Barkley with that money out of character to pay the running back, obviously, what kind of role do they give him? Are they now saying, you are the offense? You're the guy in this offense. Um, that would then put him at the top. If you're changing your offensive philosophy, he almost becomes, you know, the main guy on offense, then he might be the guy. And, and then Chauncey Garner Johnson would probably be third on the list, but very important because, man, they could make a play on that defense last year. They looked old and slow. So all three guys could be number one, but I'd probably say Huff, Barkley, Chauncey Gardner Johnson right now. 
Um, should the Eagles change their offense? Should it be based on on Saquon Barkley? And and what does he have to do in Mike Gill's mind to justify the Eagles going out of the box and going away from the green and what they typically do? So should they is an interesting question. You know, teams that are good and are winning, they run the ball late because they're they have the lead. They're running the they're clock. Winning. It's always yeah. this question of you know, and everybody, I think a lot of people, maybe you and I, John, have talked about this. Do the Eagles look at the 49ers and say, they've got Ayuk, they've got Debo Samuel, they've got George Kittle, and they've got McCaffrey, and he's the best player on that team. Why can't our best player also be the running back? And and you've heard a lot of people kind of say, why did the Eagles do this? Well, you had Swift and other guys on the market it became available like Mixon or Moss or Singletary or whoever you like Pollard. And what we're hearing is the Eagles thought that Barkley was here and those guys were here. He's a generational type of running back for them, which would say if I'm paying the guy and that's how I value him. Oh, he better be a big part of my offense. So yeah, I think you might be seeing a little shift of the way the Eagles might use the running back. And that could be coming from, you know, I don't know how much power the offensive coordinator has coming in, but did Roseman and the uh, collective collaborative effort come together and say, if San Francisco is featuring this guy and John, you know, McCaffrey's the guy they want it. Are they saying this guy is a guy that we would have got taken if he was available when it was our turn to pick now that year, he got taken number two. So that wasn't going to happen. But did they value him that high in that draft that they said, that's the guy we can change our offense for? We'll see. Yeah. But well, I would say we, for the we, money. We, we did talk to our, our guy, Pat Leonard, who was at the forefront of, of the story. And he did say the Eagles were interested in him last year as well, hoping the Giants wouldn't tag him last year. So it's been a while. They've been, uh, you know, when he when he came out, I mean, everybody loved him as a player as a talent number two overall pick the the criticism of the giants had to do with dave gettleman and the philosophy it's interesting to me because even pat pat you know took a shot at gettleman everybody takes shots at gettleman but everybody likes saquon barkley so much that they kind of give him a pass do you think that's fair or do you think if you're generational and the Eagles seem to think he's generational. Don't you have to overcome some of the hurdles? And he had a lot of hurdles. It's fair to point that out. That was a bad team, bad decisions all over the place. Had Christian McCaffrey lift those Panthers? Well, yeah, that's that's the point I was trying to make with Pat yesterday. You I know, think maybe one of the it's points a bit that we for, heard about the Eagles in this move is and, and the Giants. Um I forget it might have been Chris Canny on on the national ESPN feed that was saying, you know, it's okay to take a running back that high if you're a team that kind of traded into that spot. Not yeah, if you're ready, so, ready to if win. If you're ready to win. If you're a team that's so bad, getting a, a running back's not going to change the complexity of your team. But if you're the team that has that one piece that you need still and he kind of puts the Eagles in that category is this is a team that's a ready made offense. I mean, you were already hearing Jason Kelsey, like I have, I re it almost sounds like Kelsey knew this was coming, right? Like I knew yeah. this was happening, but I regretfully still had to make my decision. Um, but for it's me, probably tampering how he was probably. Tampering. It sounds like that, right? Are we getting yeah. some of those uh, yeah. reports out yeah. there? But yeah. um, it, for me, for the money you pay and the shift of philosophy, if that's the case, then Saquon Barkley has to be significantly better than what you had. And when I say significantly better, you know, 1,100 yards is not <laughs> going to get it I done. Know. I could have got know. 1,100 yards if I hand the ball to Boston Scott enough. This right. guy's got to get me 1,500 yards. Let me make one Saquon point and then ask you a Saquon quick question, Mike. Saquon Barkley is the number two pick. I still have no problem with it. Because what you need to do to evaluate whether it should have been the number two pick, what to, how did those other quarterbacks, you Giants needed a quarterback at the time. How'd the other quarterbacks in that draft go? That None draft of them played terrible. or diddly squat. That draft stunk. Exactly. So did Saquon Barkley think? I don't think so. So to chastise the Giants for taking him at number two, 
we're now six years after the fact. It wasn't that bad a pick. It was probably the right pick to wait, make. It was a smart pick to make. Now, when you make that pick, you're assuming, which can get you in trouble when you assume, that you'll turn around thereafter and get the other picks right. Like get an offensive line in front of him. Eh, failure. Get a quarterback who can actually play. Eh, failure. Barkley wasn't the problem. Everything else was the problem. The Giants just continued screwing things up. But because they took Saquon Barkley with the second pick of the draft is not the reason that they screwed it up. There are many other things they screwed up worse than taking Saquon Barkley with that's, the second pick of the draft. That's a good way. And that, that's a good way to look at it is they got that piece. Everything after they tried to put together, they exactly. failed at doing. But people, and, oh, how do, you, how do you take a running back with number two pick in the draft? By making the right pick would be well, the way you would do it? The the interesting thing, too, is the one year that the Giants were competent and made the playoffs, Barkley was outstanding. I mean, he had 1,300 yards. His best year was his rookie year, you know, 90 catches in that yeah. offense, 1,300 yards. But his next best competent year was – the year the Giants won the playoffs, 2022, yeah, 2022, he had but also yards. Daniel Jones was okay that year to the point. Right, but where... that should tell you if in in that offense when they had some competency, he's a 1300 yard back. What could he be in this offense with a better quarterback and a better offensive line? But that team had no threat, none in the past game, and he got 1300 yards. So you put him in this offense now with an offensive line and a couple of weapons and a quarterback that we all think is better than Daniel Jones. Are we starting to think about that too? I mean, no, right? I'm not, not yet. So then Saquon Barkley should be a significantly better player than he was in New York. So I don't have problem with that aspect of it at all. Not monetarily either. Here's the thing for me, monetarily. This is why Roseman gets a lifetime pass, whether people like it or not. You know, we've all worked at a radio station where the engineer is a guy that's a little prickly. No one wants to talk to the engineer. He's always an asshole. <laughs> he's an asshole because he creates things that he's the only guy that can fix. Yeah. Because you yeah. can't ask anybody else it's to fix It's always the, the one guy. There's one guy who can fix stuff. Right. It's only Roseman, one guy. Yes, he makes mistakes, and he drafts guys that you're like, ah. But he puts these things together in the way that I'm the only one that can fix it. Lori can't get rid of me because no one's coming in off the street figuring out how to get out of this mess, if there is even a mess. So he doesn't give the contract to Barkley without having the steps in his head of how to work around that contract. So <clears throat> I don't have a huge problem with the money. It just says to me, they're valuing that position more. Who gives a shit? They finally value a position that nobody else does. I agree. Now, right. they, they still don't value linebacker, though. Yeah, that's a problem. Not yet, yeah. right. Here was my question for uh, the usage of Saquon Barkley. You said it. John said it. He's very good out of the backfield. Might be as good as any back in the league coming out of the backfield catching the football. The Not Eagles. McCaffrey. I throw that in. Yeah, McCaffrey. Right. Uh, McCaffrey and, and, and Saquon. Um the Eagles, since Jalen Hurts took over as the starter, have not used the back out of the backfield much. Now, that goes back to Shane Steichen. You can't just lay it all at Brian Johnson's doorstep, which, you know, I think Brian Johnson deserved to get fired. I think he did a lousy job last year. Um, but this this is over two offensive coordinators. So now we're on our third. Yeah, you know that Saquon is capable of doing it, but the Eagles haven't and Jalen Hurts hasn't. Why? What do you think is the reason, just judging the stats, judging the production, that has not been even, you can't, a big part. It's a small part of the Eagles' overall offense. Why has that been the case? And do we have faith that they're going to just flip a switch? Oh, now we got Saquon. We'll throw it to the back, out of the back of that line. <laughs> that's going to work that way. That's a, that's, a, that's a great question. It's because, you know, is it because you got A.J. Brown as your first, your second, and it's not like these guys are sitting in their pocket going through progressions like it's a John Madden football game here, you know. But if they were, the running back is going to be the fourth guy. And how many times do they get check all the way down to the fourth guy before he takes off and runs? Or now we didn't see it. So you're saying, well, he didn't run all that much last year. Well, was he being forced to throw, or was he forcing throws to guys like Brown and Smith uh, more so? Um, because Keep in mind, here's one of the problems with 
DeAndre Swift that I, I think is another genesis of this move. Picking up the Blitz, they were horrible last year, especially late in the year. Well, people <laughs> said like Swift isn't a part of the pass game. Well, that's because he can't block. They couldn't have him on the field because he couldn't protect in pass protection. Gainwell has to be out there so much because Swift can't block. So therefore, Swift's not even a part. And Gainwell, for whatever reason, he was a wide receiver in college. They moved him out there. They didn't throw him the ball either. Like the running back just completely. That's what I mean. They had they had two. This that to me, it, it, guys, the March April talk because I've heard it so many times in so many organizations with so many t- teams and so many offenses about getting s- specific guys in space that aren't receivers manufacture touches type things. Nobody does it. Nobody's disciplined enough to do it. They have had, I've gotten to watch Percy Harvin take a look at some film of that guy when he got the football in his hands. Couldn't run a route to save his life. Um, Cordero Patterson, I always say, best kick returner in NFL history. Could have been a phenomenal player. Couldn't run a route to save his life. Got to get him the ball. And they would do it at times, but the discipline it takes, there's only one guy, Kyle Shanahan, who has done it successfully. I hear it all the time. I remember here in Philadelphia, 21 Pony, Darren Sproles. They're going to get Darren Sproles and Danell Pumphrey on the field at the same time. What are people going to do? These two jackrabbits out of the backfield as soon as they got pads on. You know what? We're not doing that. Uh, Somebody's got to block somebody. so many times, Jalen Rager, that's why he was brought here. Matty Frank, he's going to stretch the field, Mike, vertically and horizontally. He's going to do it. We finally got a player there, save like Tyreek Hill. <laughs> How laughable is that now? Right. How many times have we heard this? Now, when it comes to running back, again, I'm not talking about a screen play. I'm not even talking about a bubble screen necessarily, although that's more of a manufactured touch. We're obviously handing the football off. But when people start talking about wheel routes, about matching them up against slot corners, guess what? Other than Christian McCaffrey, you put any running back, any running back, DeAndre Swift, Saquon Barkley, go back to whoever, LaDainian Tomlinson, maybe a little bit different. Marshall Falk was different. couple guys. Um, It's a day off for an NFL slot corner if you're going to put running backs matching up with slot corners. Now, if you can get them matched up on a linebacker, yeah, all day. But, man, nobody does it. Well, and that goes to the thought that the Eagles have that this player is different. You know, if you throw the ball out of the backfield to DeAndre Swift and you're the slot corner or, you know, okay, I'll just come up and make the tackle on this guy. I don't want to go one-on-one and tackle Saquon Barkley. There's a big difference in trying to make a tackle on that guy than there is DeAndre Swift. And, you know, that's one of the problems with Swift. Like, this is, I think, the Eagles organizational thinking is that Swift, to me, is a guy that the fans get excited about because he's fa- – I mean, he's the, the guy who runs the 4 3 at the combine, and you're like, he just moved up draft boards. He can run. And when he gets a hole that's the size of, of the Red Sea party, he looks – like, why don't we give this guy more? But I never felt Swift had the feel of a running back. He just, you hand the ball and he shoots. Barkley is a running back. He 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 shifts gears. He changes pace. He waits. He's patient. He finds the hole. He waits and, and waits for the blocks and things to develop. He, to me, has the intuition and the feel where these other guys, they're fast, and you give them a hole, and they can get through it, and they look exciting at times. And that kind of is part of the reason why some of these guys in the pass game, they just kind of float out in the pass. Everyone's covered. The quarterback is inexperienced, and he just kind of dumps it off to the guy because he catches it, and he's got a lot of speed. Um, so that's why I think a lot of these backs catch a lot of balls. They play with quarterbacks who are kind of – or offenses that aren't really all that good, and the quarterback's not all that good, and he just checks down and panics really fast. And Hertz hasn't really done a lot of that. This offense has been pretty good. Uh, good offenses you. generally don't have the running back catching a lot of passes is is 
you know, is yeah, the thing. Unless John, John just gave you one. Well, I said unless the you're great, like John the, said, the greatest you got show Colin Shanahan sure. manufacturing touches for that guy. It can be done. Ask Marshall Falk. Ask uh, Christian McCaffrey. So, uh, but can Marshall we... Falk's a little different time frame. But yes, well, very uh, good. You, uh, agreed. It's been a while ago, but it can be done, and it could be done. Last year, Christian McCaffrey was almost MVP of the league, and he's a guy catching the ball out of the backfield. So it can be done, and uh, I I am more concerned about Jalen's ability to do that. I'm not down on Jalen, but that aspect of his game. He couldn't throw it to the back when he was almost the MVP two years ago. So uh, not not going to make an overall statement on Hurts, but I do have a question about that aspect of his game. All right. The other two big sightings, one's a easy yes-no question. The other one you got to give me your opinion on. First yes-no question. I'm setting the CJGJ interception over under number for next year at five and a half. You going over or under? I probably should say under just because, I mean, it's hard to ask a guy to keep getting six interceptions every single year. I know this year he didn't get that many interceptions, but he only played four games. And right. I think he still had a two interceptions in the four games that he played. Um, but it's a, that's a lot. Like, like well, I know uh, the kid in Dallas got hurt. So it's like how many did he have from one year to the next um, digs? So it's hard to, but it's hard to right, see a guy get the back. other kid in Dallas stepped in. Hey, I think Javon I, Bland, yeah. five that he took to the house, yeah. like sixes. Yeah. And how many? If I were to set the over under for five for him, would you say he's going to do that again? Of course not. No, no. Uh, of course pick not. sixes? No, that'll no. never happen. Again. No, but well, he just he five. Get, just that he gets five interceptions. Is I think. Crazy. He gets I, 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 I would go the under though. To Mike's point, if I'm betting. Like yeah. I'm gonna play the odds. I would I would go the because you think people stop throwing at him and stuff like that. It's just hard. Well, like it, the, it, so, so you think he's gonna get four? Well, you got, it, it, by the way, yeah, all, a lot five, of it depends you go on right up against the line. Go five. If he gets five, is he worth eleven million dollars a year? Yes. Okay. You I had think, nine I, interceptions last year as a team or nine turnover. He has nine interceptions in the last two years himself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He's a playmaking guy that this team just obviously lacked big time last year. I mean, uh, when they brought Byard in here, he was, a, I don't want to say that. I don't know. Maybe he was a step slower. Maybe it was his third defense in six weeks when he, when he got <laughs> here, he's in Tennessee. Then he comes here yeah. Then they switch coordinators on him. There might've been a little confusion going around on his head, what he was supposed to do, what, but he couldn't make a play last year. I mean, it was evident over the last six weeks of the season. If you watched an aerial cam of this team, you, you would see a team that couldn't run. They were just slow. They just got outrun by everybody on the field. Um, the safety's just st stuck in cement back there. The linebackers, no, no athleticism. Um, C.J. Gardner-Johnson is a playmaker. I can't guarantee six interceptions again, but certainly a guy who's around the ball and will be in position or – have an opportunity. I don't. You didn't have an opportunity to get six interceptions. Those guys couldn't get around anybody. Yeah, um, and I I think you know it's kind of to your point about you know there's some randomness which we we've talked about in the past about turnovers. Um, and Nick, you know, we would joke at the time when they were turning it over and they everything was great and the snowball was going down the hill. I would mention that there's a random and uh, no, we practice it. We practice. Come on. But when the ball's in the air, this guy can make a play on it. Yeah. And he's proven it pretty consistently. So when the opportunity is there, that's the, so thing. it's, it's more esoteric, but they needed his presence and they really missed his presence. And that's why, by and, the way, CJ like had to apologize. The Eagles essentially had to give the Donovan McNabb financial pot. You know what? Yeah, we missed you. Let's come yeah, back. Yeah, and I have no yeah. problem. Uh, this That's a weird thing to me is that, well, why did they just sign him last year? Okay, they made a mistake. Guess what? They've admitted they made a mistake, right. and I have no problem with that. And by the way, I the think, Eagles offered him a, a multi-year contract. I don't know what it was because he had yeah, to they low ball back and, said, and forth. The heck yeah. with you, uh, and I'll leave. And then he got lousy deals someplace else. Yeah, and then maybe exactly. he said, you know what? Maybe my value isn't what I thought, thought it was. The Eagles bring them back. Guess what? I have no problem with them maybe sticking their tail between their legs and 
you might say there's better options out there. I don't know. Maybe people like Simmons better. He's Fangio, knew him, blah, 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 blah. And that could still possibly happen, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, we were talking about this, John, I think you and I, but I've heard some national people say, ah, the, the Eagles are giving me dream team vibes. They're just going out and getting guys. That's why I like the Chauncey Garner Johnson. This isn't a dream team thing. This is, hey, we had this guy here. Everybody knows him. We know what he's all about. We know what kind of player he is. We're not bringing in some guy who may not mesh with the locker room. They obviously know who this guy is. So there is continuity here. So in an offseason where you're having a lot of change, you're bringing in a new player, but who's already been here and knows everybody. Speaking of dream team vibes... I need your response to this. Uh, Huff equals Babin. Do you buy um, it? I see where you're going with that. Yeah, he's a one-trick pony. Not very good against the run. Um, much more plays the part than the other guy. I mean, the, the, he's a, a bigger guy, t- lot lankier guy. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to think of him. He just came out of nowhere last year. Now, if you watch the... the uh, uh, highlight tapes they send out. You're getting the highlights, the best of his best. Yeah, he looks, he looks good on the highlights. He right? looks, he looks very outstanding. Good. You get shooting out of a can here. He's a young guy. Yeah. I think he's the key to a lot of this. Again, like Hassan Reddick came in here two years ago when they signed him. And it was like, you know, I, I, I've been talking about this a lot, and I don't know that a lot of people agree with me, but the parallels for me, they went down to Tampa two years ago and got blasted. And they said, all right, we were a playoff team. But to get to that next level, there's a big difference. They went out and got Hassan Reddick, A.J. Brown, Jay Bradbury. I mean, they made moves and said, we can't come back the same. Well, what'd they do this year? They did the same thing. They went out and got Huff, Barkley, and Chauncey Garner-Johnson. Three players at essentially the same positions. They got a skilled player on offense that year and, and the year. So they said, look, we weren't good enough. Tampa kicked our butt. We were a playoff team. How do we go here? And Huff... At that time, when they got Reddick, I don't think anybody thought he was going to get 18 sacks. No. Nobody. Uh, so 19, 19, so I'll, 19 set the, and a half. I'll set the Huff number at 17 and a half. You're going no under or over sacks, no. did you? Come on. I'm going you under. just said nobody expected uh, Sam Reddick to get 18 sacks. And I would have won under then. If I, gone under told me. If you, yeah, I don't know that be. anybody thought. Hassan Reddick was getting 10 sacks. Now, I thought they said, wow, this guy's pretty Brody good. Cody McDonald did. Okay. I love the Hassan Reddick sign. I begged the Eagles to sign him the year before when he signed the one-year make good deal with Carolina to <laughs> join his old coach, uh, Coach Rule. I was on the Hassan Reddick well, train before I think, anybody else. I think one of the reasons was, okay, he's in Arizona. He has double-digit sacks. They let him go. He goes to Carolina. He does even better. And they didn't care to really bring him back all that much. Because they and ran the Eagles got off. Him. They fired the coach who wanted him there. And we're gonna hold Eagles Carolina to a him. standard. We're gonna hold that against Huff because Carolina said, "Yeah, you're no, 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 no." I'm talking Eagles. about Carolina's the, the been a dumpster fire for, for years. No, I'm talking about the expectations for Reddick. So then, he has a good year in Arizona. They let him go. He has a better year in Carolina, and then he signs kind of a under market value. It turns out to be an under market value deal for him. Turns out to be key, right? Yeah, but my, my, my I guarantee is, you, Michael didn't say. Ooh, under under market value for Hassan Reddick. Good signing by the Eagles. I, I mean, there are there are very the but there are very few people. If you set the number at fifteen, there are very few people in this league. I will take the over on as pass rushers. Yeah, at fifteen zero. stacks. Uh, there's a couple guys if they're healthy. They you might you know, think they could get to fifteen. Yeah, TJ, TJ Watt. Going to get 16? No, I mean I if you're playing the odds, one guy in the league, you're starting off saying, "I know he's getting 16. I know TJ Watt's getting fifteen if he's healthy. For for there are a couple guys I know you're betting on health yeah, because Garrett anybody gets is hurt. The best pass rusher in the league. Uh, I'll take uh, him over. Nick 50, Bosa. Miles I'll, I'll take Nick Bosa. I'll take Miles. Very few. That's probably it. TJ. Nick Bosa, Miles Garrett. That's probably it. I, everybody else, I'll take the under. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just playing the odds there. So I don't think it was, you know, disrespectful to Hassan Reddick. Hassan, but Hassan outperformed his contract. He had 19 and a half, I believe, if you go through the Super Bowl. Right. Um, yeah, so he, he, he had a tremendous season. And that's why I said, Hassan Reddick, man, hold in, baby. 
I, I advocated that at the time when he showed up with the groin injury. I thought he was holding in. He never had more leverage than that moment coming off that season. And to his credit, he was a professional and he played through it. But now where the situation, he's going to get paid somewhere, whether it's here or not. Um, he's going to get upwards of $20 million plus. Um, so I'm not too worried about him financially. But uh, it would be a shame if the Eagles, because it seems like, and, and last one, because I know, you hopped on late at Mike Gill's show, 97.3 ESPN South Jersey. Every day, 2 to 6, the sports bash. Um, it seems like Vic Bangio, at least on the surface, would rather have those undersized guys he can drop. And I know that's going to anger Eagles fans because they hate when any pass rusher drops. Uh, if you have Reddick and Huff, on the same defense and they're dropping seven to 10 times a game. How, how, how angry do people become? Cause it looks like Josh sweats the odd man out, to be honest. Yeah. That's what it appears. And it's interesting because I guess that means they will rework the Reddick deal to try to change that cap number <laughs> and sweat would be the guy. I guess the question on that is, do they think they can get more for sweat? It seems like they're coming to the no, the, the and, and there's talk they might even release Josh Sweat at some point if they wow. have to. Um, so it's not trending in a positive way. I only ask that because Sweat is the younger player at a better, I mean, his, he doesn't get paid as much as Reddick. So could you yeah. say, hey, this guy's still a. Pretty- I'm, I'm stunned that they have gone this route with Josh Sweat. I am. I'm stunned. I think he's a good player. Didn't have a great season last year, but I think he's a really good player. Obviously, nobody played well down the stretch. He didn't play well. Haas didn't play well. Nobody played well. Um, Jalen Carter didn't play well down the stretch. Uh, Nobody did. So I'm surprised. And, And all I can come to is he wants a different style on the edge. That's that's the only thing I keep coming back to. Could it be something else? No, and 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 the fact that they would keep Reddick and Huff, I mean, because they seem to be you know similar type of guys, um, both not good against the run. I mean, what are you going to look like against the run with those? Especially two guys with no linebacker, you got to go hunting for a linebacker and no linebackers. Right, add that all in together. And you've got two edge rushers who don't have a lot of interest against the run and two linebackers currently. Well, you only have one linebacker currently. The other one's not even – you only have one line. Well, Bond, but he's not really a – he would be more of an edge rusher. Yes. That's, well, they have uh, Ben Van Sumer in. So right now it would be Nicobe Dean. If they had to strap up and play on Sunday, Mike Gill, it would be Nicobe Dean if he's healthy, if he's ready to go, which I don't – I haven't seen him in a while, so – and Ben Van Sumeren. Luckily, they don't have to play this weekend. Hey, TJ Edwards was once an undrafted uh, gem. Yeah, well, and they let yeah. him walk out the building for they, some reason. They, they messed that one up right, left, and center. Mike Gill, a pleasure. I appreciate your Surfer Boy shirt. Thank you very much for hopping on. We got Billabong. One last plug for Billabong. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're not getting a surfboard out of it. Well, a nice try. Uh, yeah. Nor is Gill. But thank you, Mike Gill. For... I'll be in Clearwater next week, Jody, so you won't Oh, see really? Me. You're on down no. for the last week? I am. I'm going uh, Tuesday to Tuesday. I'll be at the last two games. Root my boy Rojas in for a couple of hits because he's down to about a buck twenty-five. Yeah, and those who said one. he's going to start the year in AAA, yeah, they might be getting that right. I said he's going to be their opening day center fielder. He needs to string together a couple of two base hit days to Struggling. put that talk to rest. All right, Mike Gill, thank you. That's you Mike Gill, uh, ninety-seven point three ESPN, the Sports Bash down the shore. All right, McMahon McDonald coming back. Uh, Zingaro to join us in less than 15 minutes. Don't go anywhere. Oh, and let me tell you about a way to get an outstanding savings on your insurance, guys. Birds fan, here's your chance to save up to 40% on your car insurance from one of Jacob Sports' great partners. Here's what you need to do. Call one of the two managing general partners, either Jim or Fran, and tell them you are a friend of Jacob Sports and Birds 365.
My name is uh, Fran Salerno. I'm a managing director here at Del Val Insurance Group. Been in the business for over 36 years, saving people money on their insurance needs. Give us a call. Let us help you custom design an insurance plan that meets both your needs and budget. 